Okay, so for this week, if you look on Canvas, you can look so if you want. If not, I'll just show you here. Canvas week four. Uh, we have one more WordPress concept to work on about offline WordPress. Last week, we talked about Instant WP, Instant WordPress, which is one way to have a version of WordPress on your flash drive. Uh, here's going to be another sort of version. This one's a little bit more advanced because it also gives you the power uh, to work with a variety of different WordPress, offline, Word, offline WordPress accounts, and also in a little bit more of a realistic setting when you're dealing with more advanced web design. It's not just the front end. It's not just what are the graphics, what's the interface, but there's a back end. There's a whole infrastructure behind the scenes. There's a database, there's a server and stuff. So we're going to start to look at that stuff. The assignment that you'll need to do before you leave is to be able to do all of this. Uh, just as a general overview, downloading and installing something called MAMP, which we'll talk about, creating a database. Okay, we're going to need to know a little bit about database, working with databases with phpMyAdmin. We'll talk about that. Downloading and installing WordPress. Um, and uh, then a couple of little ancillary things like the actual content of your site plus a plugin. Now, remind me, I, I think you did this in part one, but did you ever work with the duplicator plugin in part one of the class? No, oh, okay, that was the other semester, so never, never mind. You did? You did? Duplicator? duplicator? Does that sound familiar? Duplicator? Okay. I remember doing like, oh, oh yeah, we, yeah. we transferred our GoDaddy account to offline. Hosting X10 or whatever. Okay, okay, great. So we're gonna get, uh, we're gonna get another look at it um, uh, in this class, duplicator, and the value of it being able to transfer a site. So okay, these are the general goals, and what we're gonna need to do is, is learn some of these things. Now, I already downloaded it for us, so that'll save us a little bit of effort. But we have uh, this other solution called MAMP, M-A-M-P, MAMP. This is, if you want to look at it yourself, you can go to the website MAMP.info. It's another local web development tool. It's another place to install WordPress besides a real server. It's for Windows, it's for Mac. It was originally for Mac. That's what the M is for, MAMP. Now, does anyone know or has anyone heard of something called LAMP, L-A-M-P, LAMP? Not, not the LAMP, that, not this LAMP right here. Yes. Not this one right here. The one technical wise. Does anyone know what LAMP is, L-A-M-P? Yes and no. Heard of it, but I have no idea what it is. OK. LAMP, L-A-M-P stands for Linux. Apache, MySQL, PHP. It's various technologies um, that help run a web server, Linux server, running Apache software with MySQL database on PHP. You don't need to know the details of that, but LAMP is a version of the software where a website runs. Okay, there's also one called WAMP, which is AMP, that's the same thing, Apache, MySQL, PHP. The W, what do you think the W stands for? Windows. Windows. So LAMP is the Linux version of the web software, basically. WAMP is the Windows version of the web software. And then MAMP. MAMP is Macintosh. Exactly. Mac is MAMP, is for Mac, Macintosh. So the cool thing, though, is that the latest versions of MAMP now are cross platform, they work both on Windows and Mac. You'd have to download the Windows version if you wanted to, to work with it, and you'd have to download the Mac version if you were on a Mac. Well, MAMP nowadays works on both uh, Windows and Mac, which is really useful because it's just one software to work with. And then, of course, one of the best things about it is the price, which is free. The MAMP version, regular version, is free. There's the Pro version, which is not free. Um, I don't know the price at the moment, but sometimes things are free, sometimes they are not. Uh, but the great thing is we're able to download and use this software so that we can make a WordPress website, multiple WordPress websites on Windows or on Mac. And so I've already downloaded the software for us. It's in the network folder. So if you go back to the desktop web design folder, inside of our CIS256 folder. We want to copy map.exe, copy that from my 
folder, copy it to your desktop. It should be faster here than trying to get it off the website. We, uh, this, we're going to run this to install it. So if you also want to keep that installer, you could. But once it's installed, then you just use the, the software itself. But you can download it to your USB as well. That way you don't have to re-download it from the website. Okay, so um, after you copy it to your flash drive or desktop, then double-click it to start it. And there'll be a little bit of an installation process. Pretty much all of the defaults should be fine. Uh, when the first pop-up happens, when we'll just click yes on that, and I'll just wait a moment. It's a little bit slow for a few people. Just double click it. We'll start an installation process. It won't take too long. So after you've copied it, double click it. Um, again, these defaults are fine. Uh, it's going to ask to install this stuff. Just say yes. Next is fine. This is the thing that no one reads but everyone agrees to, so go ahead and accept it. It's basically saying you're using the software as is. You're not going to use it to hack the Pentagon, anything like that. The honor system. Next. Uh, where to install, just leave it as the default as well. It'll install on your hard drive. Now, this version of using offline WordPress is a little bit less portable than Instant WP. But I personally like to use this version a little bit more um, because it feels more stable and faster. The version that you're running, Instant WP off your flash drive, it kind of seemed a little buggy once in a while last time, right? And if you might have been using it at home after you left, it might have also seemed um, a little bit like that sometimes. I don't, I don't know why. But I show both solutions because sometimes we do need to have a flash drive full of our site to travel from client to client or whatever. And sometimes we need a version that's installed right on our computer where it's a little bit more stable. So I'll just select the default here. Next. It's going to install to the Start menu. OK, fine. Next. Create a desktop icon. Sure. Next. So I didn't change anything. Just click Going Next on everything and let it install. And so this is going to install a brand new software on the computer uh, called MAMP. Um, which creates a virtual server on your computer. This is the server that you would get from GoDaddy or X10 Hosting or whatever it's called. Uh, this is going to be a server off of your computer, a virtual server, where you can have multiple websites. The trick is just to kind of understand how it works, which we'll walk through it together. And then being able, having the power to create multiple websites off of your computer is very good because then after you've fully designed them and tested them, then you can put it to the real internet. So I'm running out of things to say and this still hasn't finished. Okay, <laughs> what's the weather like today? Nice and sunny. Okay, so it's coming any minute. So it's a lot of software, but it's, um, this, is what a, this is what you're buying if you get an account with, with GoDaddy or if you get an account with these free hostings. There's a lot of stuff behind the scenes and this gives you uh, all of that ability. So, once that's done, we will have a new icon on the desktop. And when that finishes, we will run our MAMP and uh, we'll see how the software works. You could, yeah. It's pretty powerful, this... Um... That's amazing. Yeah. Okay, so here we go, finish. Kind of anticlimactic. Okay, finish. <laughs> there we go, finish. Okay, so when that finishes eventually, just click finish on that. It looks like it gets stuck for half a second, but then just wait on that and click finish. Okay, so we get two things. We get MAMP and MAMP Pro. Now, regular old MAMP, the gray one, works just fine. It has all of the features. MAMP Pro has a few more, which you don't really need. 
Um, but no, when we were installing it, if you noticed, there was a point that it asked you, would you also like to install MAMP Pro? I said just to leave it as is and it's going to work just fine. But if you are going to do this at home, you can decide if you want both. You're honestly never really going to use MAMP Pro, so advanced technique is to maybe not install it. For the moment, on this regular MAMP, the gray one, double click it. We're going to get this nice little interface that says, okay, we're loading up the various features of your of your site. Eventually, these things should turn green on the right side. Apache server is active. MySQL server is active. Not the cloud one yet, because it hasn't been set up. But once you've got green on both of those, we have the basic software. We have a virtual server running. So click on the icon Open Web Start Page. This opens a web browser and it shows the web address localhost slash MAMP. So localhost is the name that we see over and over for a website that is not out on the real internet. It's on your computer, your local computer. And we're looking at the MAMP website on our computer. So just a little bit of info that you've got PHP running with a MySQL database we're using version 4.0, etc. Okay, a lot of interesting information there, that's fine. But then at the very top, uh, start my website, click on that, and it'll just show you a message if you click my website. It'll show you a, a, a message that's nothing meaningful really. It's just, okay, this you've got a server. If you see this, it's working. Um, you, you need to put your website into your your, your hard drive, the C drive, in the MAMP folder in a folder called htdocs. So hypertext documents, a website. So you can have multiple websites as long as they're in this folder. Let's take a little digression to go look at that folder. Minimize everything and let's go to uh, this computer. You know, open up an explorer window. And what this message over here was saying, on the C, in the C drive, in the MAMP folder, in the htdocs folder, is where your sites should go. So in this window here, in the Explorer window, let's go to the C drive, local disk C, C as in cat. Inside of the MAMP folder, open that one. And then what's the next one? What's the next one? htdocs, yeah. So inside of htdocs folder, so websites go here. There is currently the default, that quick message that appeared, that message over here that says, if you see this, it's working. Well, this web page right here is this, is this file right there, and there's the graphic. So there's no meaningful website here just yet. But this is just to confirm I downloaded MAMP, I installed MAMP, I, I started it, it says the server's running, and it's confirming that, you know, there's something here. So the next step would be, I'm going to install WordPress. We do need to go, I, I didn't download this one for us, so we do need to go to download the WordPress software. And there's two possible websites to go get that at, which is the correct possibility. What website? Where do we download WordPress? WordPress.org. WordPress Let's go to the web uh, on your web server on your web browser. Let's go to WordPress.org, and on the top right, get WordPress. Scrolling down, you should see then it says download WordPress. Click the blue button, not the one that says the tar GZ version. You want the regular download WordPress icon. That will download. Go ahead and save that. Should not take too long. Once that downloads, whatever browser you're in, you'll want to open the window where it downloaded. I 
has to scan it for viruses first, I guess. Go ahead and just let it do that when it finishes downloading. Question. Um, I think our computers have it where it goes to the bottom of the page and it gives you different files. It doesn't have us like, open it or anything. So no, you should go to the download. Um, yeah. I did. Really I did. It, it, it yeah. popped up down there instead of that bar. It popped up oh. down here. Uh, yeah, like right over here. Okay, well, I just want to click with the screen. Oh, as long as you see it like that, it will be fine. Okay. As long as you see it like that. So, depend. The web browsers are a little different. I'm on Internet Ex or I'm on Edge, so the web browsers might be slightly different. So if you s it looks different than mine, let me know. But eventually, it should download, and maybe it says something about open the file or open the folder or view the downloads. Um, we uh, if we click open here. In my case, mine downloaded to the downloads folder. And in the downloads folder, I, I have a, a zip file. Uh, in the zip file, I, I've got a WordPress folder. So um, one cool thing about the Mac is that when you download this on the Mac, it also unzips it for you. So that's really helpful. On Windows, it's still, it's still zipped up. It's still compressed. It's not ready to use yet. So we probably have a button up on top for extract. I want to extract it. I want to take out the zipped up WordPress folder out of the zip file. So click extract. Uh, wherever this pop up says, just uh, that's fine. Uh, I'm just making a note that this is going to extract over to the downloads folder. If you want to extract it elsewhere, you could, but I'll leave the default there because then it'll it'll open once I've extracted. So that'll take a moment. It's going to extract, it seems to say about 2,000 items. And uh, that's very common that this technology, this software has a lot of little pieces. So once that extracts in a moment, what we're doing in general is we've got MAMP is the web server. We then need to download and copy WordPress into MAMP. And then we can start to run the WordPress software on the server. So those are the two big ideas we're doing at the moment. Uh, download and install WAMP, download and extract WordPress. Okay, so eventually it should extract and I've got a folder called WordPress. Inside of it is a bunch of files that make our account, our WordPress file work our WordPress site work. But this folder is a full-featured website. This folder is the WordPress website. This folder, I need to put it into the MAMP folder where it said, your websites go here. That was the htdocs folder. So after you've extracted WordPress, not the zip version, but the WordPress, the unzipped WordPress folder, drag that or copy it into your htdocs folder inside your C drive, MAM, htdocs to copy your WordPress extracted folder into htdocs. So I either copy or move, it's okay. Usually, personally, what I do is I copy it because once we install this and we start using it, if we wanted um, to start over, or a brand new site. Let's say I'm making a site for myself and for my uncle. Well, as long as I've got two different folders, and I can rename this if I want, I could call it my site. As long as I've got a folder, my uncle's site, my site. As long as I've got a folder, it is a different site. It is a whole completely different site. So I like to copy the folder instead of moving it because I'll have to go back to download it again if I want to start a separate site. I want to see this site. So back to the web browser. Localhost shows you that sort of like little preview message. But I want to see the site I just copied into the folder, which is called WordPress. That WordPress folder that I just copied into the htdocs folder, that's where I need to visit on my web browser.
So just to show you a little digression here, if I had a folder called My Amazing Site, obviously the address at the top I would have to type is localhost slash my amazing site. See, does that make sense? Any site that's in its own folder, the address at the top will be localhost slash the name of the folder. This pops up here. This should look familiar. We, um, so yes. Did, how did you get to there? Did you After, do WordPress uh, folder or? After you copied your WordPress folder into the htdocs folder, yes. up on the web browser, you type the address localhost slash WordPress. You're typing localhost, which is the which is the MAMP software, and then you're typing slash the name of the folder you just copied in. And that should then start up that uh, installation screen that I just had right there. Yeah. Not working? Okay, let's see what we've got here. I Okay, so this is going to be a process, pretty uh, straightforward. It asks what language would you like to install the WordPress interface as, so you can choose any one you want. I'm going to go with English. <laughs> Next. Okay, here's where we have something a little bit more advanced than last week. So it says, okay, you're ready to install WordPress. All we need is the name of your database. We haven't created a database yet. So this is going to say, what's the name of your database? What's the name to access the database? What's the password to access the database? We haven't done this yet. So let's pause right here. And if you go back to MAMP, your other MAMP screen, remember it's, if you lose this screen, whoops, I closed it. If you ever lose the screen, you can get back to it just by going back to open web start page here. That always takes you back to this main, you know, little MAMP interface here. So. Here we have at the top a tool, phpMyAdmin. This is the software that you use to, to manage databases. A database is a place where a lot of information is stored. A WordPress website is full of a lot of information. How many users do you have? How many products? The prices of your product? Even basic things, the colors on your site, your fonts. All of that, all of that stuff is stored in a database. So in order for WordPress to work, it needs to be connected to a database. So first, we need to create a database. Up here under Tools, click on phpMyAdmin. You get this big scary interface with a, a way to manage a database. Um, but all we need to do is, um, at the top over here under 
databases, click on this button here, databases. And there's a box that says, create a database. What would you like to call it? And then create. Let's call this my site. These names of these databases can be anything you want. This name could be the actual name of your website. So I often use the, the example um, in my classes, Victor's Bakery. So I'm going to make a website for Victor's Bakery. I could call this Victor's Bakery. What I would recommend is keep it lowercase with no spaces and such. So just a very simple my site and click create. On the left side you should see now we have one. So I've got on the list, on the left side now, I've got a new database. My whole WordPress website, everything about it, the colors, the fonts, the products, the users, the sales, and all of that is stored in there. That was also true for the instant WP, but we just never have to deal with it. We're looking at it in a much more advanced way because sometimes on your own real life websites, or if you get hired to be a web designer and such, you have to do this. You have to manage the deeper level of your website sometimes. Um, it's not just about the, the pretty interface on the front end over here. It's not just about nice buttons to click on all of that. Sometimes behind the scenes, you have to deal with this stuff. Um, I, I've uh, worked before. Um, I believe I mentioned it in the class that not only do I teach this, but I've been part of companies throughout the years that we make websites for clients. I've had to spend time in this part of it too there's been a few instances where uh, the client completely lost their password. It's like it evaporated completely. You can get the password back from the database. That's the power of what this is. This has a list of everything that's in your database, in your website. So once we've got our, our actual site installed, we'll have a bunch of items here, such as passwords and all that important stuff. So the database is very important. All we needed to do here was create it, and we can go back to our other screen where it where we were back on our WordPress screen, we have a database now. Check, number one. Number two and three actually come from the screen back over here that it tells you that eventually when you're gonna work with your database, it's gonna ask for a username and a password. So eventually WordPress will need a username and password to connect to the database, and according to man, it's root and root. So if we go back to the setup, okay, we'll click let's go. Database name. What's the database name I just uh, invented 30 seconds ago? My site. My site. If you called it something else, you will type the name of what you called it right there. Username and password. Hmm, what are those? Those are the ones that it's telling you right here. The database name and password are root and root. So username root, password root. Besides that, I don't need to change anything else. I need to know what's the name of my database because every website needs its own database. I just created a database for my website. Check. Uh, when we're using MAMP, it tells you that the username and password is root plus root. That's done. And database host and table prefix. Well, database host, if this was like on the real internet, that would be victorsbakery.com. Or it would be, you know, myamazingsite.biz. It would be what's the, what, what, on what server is it on? As we're using localhost, um, our websites are on, I mean, if, as we're using MAMP, our websites are on localhost, which is on these computers, the one you're sitting at. And table prefix, don't worry about that, it's just how does it store the data. Click Submit, 
If you get an error, you mistype either the name of your database or you mistype root for the password and the user. I didn't get any problems, so I will click Run. And now we get to the screen here where it asks, what is the name of the website? Now this is stuff that's more important to your, your users, the regular customers. This is what they will see. This other stuff behind the scenes, inside of PHE, my admin and such, in the, in the back end over here, the customer will never see this. But you as the web designer, web developer, you, you will see this stuff. This is what the users will see. This is the part where you can decide now the name of your website, what's the, what's the username, login, and password, and the email. So you can put whatever you want here. You can follow what I'm about to do. Again, you can do whatever you want. I'm going to do the Victor's Bakery. Username, Victor, password, something that I will remember. And then your email address. Okay, so this last item at the very bottom. Yes. For us, it doesn't matter too much because our website isn't even on the internet. Yes. So that question down there doesn't matter. If this was on the real internet, if I had bought a GoDaddy account or whatever, and I started to install my website brand new on the real internet, mm -hmm. the search engines could start finding it. Google, Bing, Yahoo, etc. The search engines could start finding you, but my website's not complete yet. Uh -huh. And then people are going to visit it and my website's not complete and then they won't come back because my website's not complete so you could say don't you know have the search engines ignore my website for the moment it's not ready yet um, it then has a little caveat it's up to search engines to honor this request so the search engines google yahoo bing whatever they they have to you know scouts honor agree okay we're not going to actually find your find your website so the value of that is as you're working on your site on the real internet you may tell the search engines, don't look at my site. But because we're running on a local host using MAMP, it doesn't even matter. Were you doing that, that, however, on a real server? Yeah, that's why, because we okay. just started. So. Yeah, so turning it on on a real server might be useful because the site's not ready for public. If all of that is good, remember, write this down, because if you don't type in my amazing password, I have no way to retrieve your password. Install. Click Install at the bottom. It should hopefully say Success. And then you can log in. Okay, so now I've got a login screen here, and it's asking me to log in with the account I just created. So if you didn't create an account like mine here, obviously you need to type in your information and then log in.
And so now this should be familiar. Here's WordPress. So at the top, I've got the usual visit site. This is the latest version. We, it doesn't even need any updates. It's, it's like the latest version. We just got it off the website, right? So it's not even any updates. Um, and I can go back and forth, dashboard versus visit site. So all of the things that we've uh, started to learn so far and that you've previously learned about WordPress now are in effect. Uh, again, well, this, this seemed like a lot more work compared to Instant WP. Again, I'm showing two different solutions because one might work better for some purposes and some might for the others. I personally, and someone that's been doing this for a little while, since the year 2001, which is a while now mm -hmm. that I think about it, um, this is the way that I would do it. I would use MAMP or WAMP or LAMP. I would use those ways that are like a little more technical because they're more full-featured and powerful. Instant WP works all right, but um, this is just the more powerful way because you will maybe for clients or for your own accounts, you will need to deal with the database. You might need to set up an offline version. I don't want it on the real internet yet. I want to work on it for a month and then upload it. If you put it on the real internet, everyone's going to see it and your product is incomplete and that might be a detriment. But we have to do one more step like, okay, this that I worked on it right now, uh, this is working at the station that you're sitting at. When you try to go home, you unless you took this with you, you, you don't have a copy of the site. This is when Duplicator comes into play. Duplicator makes a copy of your website completely, including the database. So using the duplicator back, uh, the plugin, we'll make a backup of the site, so we'll, able to, we'll be able to take the site back with us, back and forth home. Duplicator is a plugin. It's something that adds an extra feature. WordPress is pretty full featured. It lets you add pages and posts and images and all that great stuff, but it doesn't have a very good backup tool. So a plugin would do that. It would give you extra features. Let's go to plugins and add a new plugin. And we're going to search on the right side up here, search plugins for duplicator. see it here it comes from the company snap creek very highly reviewed once you find duplicator wordpress migration plugin click install and then activate So after we find the plugin and we install it, we need to remember to activate this. We can have a bunch of plugins installed, but they may not actually be running. You have to always remember to activate them. So there we go, activate. And now we will use it to make a copy here. So under the duplicator, we get a brand new item. Oftentimes when you add a new plugin, you get a new menu item. So we get a brand new duplicator. So the packages, duplicator packages. There are no, there are no packages. There are no backups yet. Click create. So on the top right here, let's click create. All of these defaults should be totally fine. It'll put some date, and 
and the name of your site. If you want to change any of this, you could, but the defaults are, are fine. Click Next. It'll scan your server. It'll tell you right now, even though I haven't done anything on my site, it's still already 45 megabytes. And the database itself is 1 megabyte. So my website's already about 46, 47 megabytes, even though I haven't done anything. And that's common because a complex infrastructure like WordPress has a lot of pieces. So, OK, everything looks good here. If there was an error, uh, if it would say warning or, or bad or whatever error message, you would be able to open it up. And it would tell you, you know, what's the error and possible ways to fix it. But on mine, I, it, it worked fine, it seems. So I'll click Build. So this is going to collect all of the pieces of the site and the database. A lot of times, um, beginners especially don't realize that, okay, I'm going to go home, so all I need to do is, is take this folder with me. I, that's what the folder where my site is. But that doesn't have the database. The database is elsewhere. So that's why something like Duplicator makes a copy of everything. And it's all put together in this one zip file. So 45 megabytes became 15 megabytes. And then there's this installer file, which will sort of resurrect. It will bring it all back. It's all been compressed down into one thing, but all those 2,000 files still there exist, but we need the installer. So uh, we need to download both of these because both of these are your complete website. Um, I always have an issue with the one-click download, so I don't even try it. We need to download both of these. So if you click that first installer, you should say, do you want to open it or save it? We want to save it. And then that archive, again, click it, open it or save it, you want to save it. When both of those download, they're not really downloading from the real internet, but it's still it's sort of pretending like it's a download. And eventually when it downloads, you want to open the folder. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> so after these files download, uh, I'll say uh, open folder. And on my downloads folder, mine's all cluttered, I guess, but whatever you see in here, you should see two files. One is this installer PHP file, and one is um, this zip file with a, with a huge name. So both of these files are very important for me to, to keep, to take with me. So um, the way I would personally do this to organize yourself here is I would make a new folder. I'm going to make a folder over here. I will put today's date on it, and then I'm going to move both of these files. Both of these files need to be in, in one place. So to keep them together, make a new folder and put them both into your new folder. Uh, and I'll just put today's date, 2190702. So those two separate files that got downloaded, copy them or move them into the brand new folder you created. This process uh, of creating this duplicator backup is really cool because now that's your complete site. That that folder, I can take it to GoDaddy, Bluehost, any sort of server, um, and run the installation file to to resurrect it. Um, 
I was planning on pausing at this point uh, for a break, and then when we come back, uh, we would continue. So, is everyone kind of good at this point? Did it did it kind of work along these these uh, these points? You were able to make your site and make a duplicator backup. Overall? Okay. So let's take a break. It's 2.05. We'll take a break until 2.15. When we come back at 2.15, we will, we will continue. <laughs>